I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and this is Hyundai's second N hot hatch, the 2022 i20N. Hyundai officially categorizes the i20N as a light hatch, which is what it is because it's not an i30 and that's a small hatch. And small equals good in hot hatch land because that's all about agility. But I probably should point out here that the i20N probably isn't as small as you think it is. In terms of its wheelbase length and its width, it's exactly the same size as a Mark VI Golf GDI. So we're not really talking pint size performance here, but it is quite short. It's only 4,075 millimeters long, so it's about 140 millimeters shorter than that Golf I just mentioned. And all of that goes towards making this having the biggest footprint it can on the road. Now, what is different to the normal i20, which was launched internationally in early 2020 for this third generation car, is quite a lot actually. At the front, all of this is new, including this sort of checkered flag grill section here, all this red piping that goes along the sides, along there and down the back. And we also have ducting here that actually work to cool the front brakes. So this is not a car that's about jazzing up its appearance. This is actually about performance. Now we have 18 inch matte gray wheels here, alloys with 21540 R18 Pirelli P0s that were developed specifically for the car. We also have 320 millimeter ventilated front discs, which is pretty big on a 1.6 turbo. Uh, certainly something that would have once been fitted to V8s and we have it on this car right here. And in terms of the rest of the i20N package, it has had a lot of changes. It's chassis, steering, brakes and suspension have all been turfed from the normal car or significantly improved. You can't turf the whole body, that's just been made stronger. I think it has 12 more welding points than it normally has and some bracing underneath the car to improve the rigidity and the torsional strength of it to make the suspension work as best as it can. Now, the steering rack is completely new as well. It's just over two turns lock to lock. The suspension has all been redone, uh, tuned at the Nürburgring and at Namyang, Hyundai's proving ground in Korea. It is not an adaptive damp setup though. It is just a fixed damper rate, but that is all about achieving what they see as the prime suspension setting for the car rather than faffing about with other ones. In Australia, it's available in five colors. This is the performance blue, Hyundai N's sort of hero color. It and the white are both solid. There's three others, which is black, red, and silver that are all metallic, which are 495 bucks. And if you want to pay another thousand dollars, although I don't know whether you do this on the black one because it's already black, you get a black two-tone roof as well. So I think it actually looks pretty cool. I think it looks better in the flesh than it did in photos. We also have black mirror caps here, as you'd expect from a junior hot hatch, but maybe some of the things you wouldn't expect are things like front parking sensors. We've got keyless entry and start. The mirrors electrically fold when you lock the car. We don't have a sunroof, which many people will be very happy about. We have a fixed rear wing here that is an acquired taste, but I feel like it sort of suits the shape of the vehicle. And at the back of the i20 in here, it is quite busy, but I also think it looks fitting to what the car is. We also have a bespoke torsion beam rear suspension for the i20N, which is a dual beam setup that Hyundai claims increases the roll stiffness and helps the car turn in. And we also have a limited slip diff up the front, a proper mechanical one that is all about making the i20N suck itself into an apex and make this the corner carver that they claim that it is, which I'm sure it is. At the back here, we have got this junior hot hatch thing going on big time. There's a lot of red lines and stuff like that in this car because it isn't a top spec Hyundai. It only lights up 
this section and not this bit in here that's just a red stripe but i do really like the way it has all these blackout stuff it has a little bit of audi s1 chic about it if you remember how the audi did that sort of 70s black panel around the number plate i think it looks really good on the i20n better in the flesh again than in photos and in here we also have a little bit less than junior boot size in here we have a modest if useful boot that comes with its own standard cargo net which is really good nothing else in particular other than the Bose stereo speaker just over here but when you put these 6040 backrests down it is a completely flat floor just over 1100 litres of boot space and if you want to maximise the boot space with the rear seats up you just pull out this floor here and you have 310 litres which is pretty good for a light hatch and a space saver spare beneath. Now you often get into small hot hatches like the i20N and discover that the interior is just a whole bunch of cheap crap with all this tinsel on top and it isn't really a holistic design. And while the interior of this car isn't particularly high end, because well there's no soft touch plastics at all, all of this is hard, all of the doors are hard, everything is just about being inexpensive, it doesn't feel like that at all because it covers all of the basics so well. Like, for starters, the seats that I'm sitting in, they're cloth with sort of leatherette sides and stitching, but they look really good. The passenger doesn't even get height adjustment, but the seat is deep enough and comfortable enough to not have to need that stuff. The driver just has basic manual adjustment, but the driving position is excellent. The steering wheel in front of me is Hyundai's end steering wheel with really great bolstering around the sides of it. It's got those little end buttons for the end mode and the custom mode and stuff like that, as well as a little red one here that says rev, where you can turn rev matching on and off for the six speed manual. Although it's such a great gearbox that I don't know why you would need that help. We also have a traditional handbrake here for handbrake turns in safe and appropriate places. And we also have just a generally really uniform and easy to read layout. Now in front of me are two 10.25 inch screens. The screen directly in front is the same screen that's in a whole bunch of other Hyundais and Kias, but this one has its own end screen that sort of mimics an Audi RS kind of screen, but with Hyundai's own flavor. And on the 10.25 inch center screen here, you can hit end mode and it brings up a screen that shows you engine parameters, but it also shows you the tracks. Like by 2022, there'll be up to 10 tracks in Australia and then more coming, which can be software updated in the car that the i20N instinctively knows. And so when you drive in the front gate, it says, welcome to Wakefield Park, which is where we are here. And when you get out on the track and set where you are at the track, it automatically knows where the start and finish line is. And so it just logs track laps for you, which is kind of great. There's also another screen here that has engine, steering, air, C, all those settings here, which you can also access via the end buttons on the steering wheel. And when you do, it shows you directly in the instrument pack in front here, how many little marks you've got next to engine and steering, because there's three settings in each and you can amp up the exhaust sound and meeten up the steering. But I feel like for much of the time, driving it with steering on one is plenty. Now, the rest of the interior is really simple, but effective. We have single zone climate control. We have two USB ports here with a 12 volt in the center. Got a wireless phone charging pad there. Got the drive mode button just there, nice and simple. This beautiful gear lever. And this little bin here that also has like a sliding armrest, which is pretty good for a light hatch. And I should point out that in the door, we can fit not only this one liter camping bottle, which you can't do in most Hyundai's, but we can also squeeze in a little sparkling water bottle next to it, which is kind of cool and effective. Let's try the back. That simple but effective theme completely continues in the back of the i20N because there isn't really much to dazzle you in here. Like these doors are rock hard. All the speaker grills are the same as the front. The backs of the front seats are full vinyl with only one map pocket. And then there's no air vents, but it's a small hatch. But everything is put together so well and it's so comfortable in here that you can really see the European design focus of this car. This is meant to be a family car for many countries in Europe and it does that superbly. Now I'm sitting behind this tombstone seat here but I've got a really good view. All I can see is how good the stitching is on the back of this vinyl seat. 
I've got a really good view out as well. And even though the roof lining is all anthracite, I still have enough headroom. I've got a terrific seat to sit in with really good under thigh support. And I can vouch that this center seat is also completely sitable. So if you had three modest to smallish people in the back here, you could squeeze three adults if you wanted to, but everyone actually gets a comfortable seat. So yeah, we don't have a fold down armrest. We don't have air vents. We've just got a single USB port here and all these hard plastics, but all of the basics here are right. Even this seat in front of me, which is as low as it'll go, I can move my feet around in front. I've got all this knee room here and the same applies over here. And even the seats are the same level. We don't have the passengers jacked up in the air. It's sort of low and even and well thought out. The combined fuel consumption figure for the i20N is 6.9 litres per 100 kilometres. However, we averaged 8.8 .8 litres per 100 kilometres, but over nearly 400 k's of driving and some of that very hard. So that's a good number for this car. The warranty is as per any other Hyundai, it's five years or unlimited kilometres. And the servicing is every 12 months or 10,000 k's. Each service is $309, which means over five years or 50,000 kilometres, it's 1,545 bucks. The greatest thing about having a small hot hatch like the i20N is the fact that it's small and it's light and smallness and lightness equal agility and that's exactly what this car is about. Now under the bonnet is the 1.6 turbo new generation SmartStream G engine that debuted recently in the facelifted Kona and here it has more power than in anything else. It has 150 kilowatts from 5,500 to 6,000 RPM and it has 275 newton metres from 1750 to 4500. But it also has an overboost function, which you can access in any of the drive modes beyond normal, which gives it 304 newton metres from 2000 to 4000 RPM. So if you think that this car weighs only a little over 1200 kilos, you'll get the idea of just how chubby the i20N's drivability is and how strong its performance is. It isn't as fast as an i30N because Hyundai's got to leave a bit of room for its bigger brother, but it's not far behind. 0 to 100 claim is 6.2 seconds, which is impressively brisk. That's like a Renault Sport Megane of two generations ago, and that's plenty in a small hot hatch. The top speed is 230, and I'm sure that it's very stable at that speed, although we can't test that here at Wakefield Park. What we can test is the agility of the chassis, and it's just fabulous. The turn in of this car with all of the suspension changes that Hyundai's made over the regular i20 that we don't get here, we just get the good one, which is nothing to complain about. And also having a Torsen type mechanical limited slip diff in a car that costs a little bit over $32,000 and is only available with a really slick six speed manual transmission kind of defines everything that the i20 in is about. It has incredible turn in and grip on this track, lap after lap after lap. And those oversized brakes that it has for a car that's reasonably small just hold up tremendously well. Like you would normally think that say the tyres would go off on a car after four, five, six laps, but here the Pirelli P0s that are made specifically for this car just seem to just hold on. And when you get out and have a look, they're not even feathered, which is part of the beauty of having a light car in the first place. If I had to pick on anything about it, I would say on one occasion on the track and also on the road, I found it a little bit difficult to find second gear when downshifting, doing my own rev matching, although it does have its own rev matching function. But, you know, really, this is what great little light height hatches are about. The road performance of the car is tremendous as well. Like going through little tight corners, you can lift off in a corner and it'll pop its tail around. But you also have ESC Sport there to work in there to kind of give you a safety net. So even though it does its little pivoting performance, it's never sort of a, a scary reversing off into a bush kind of thing. It's just helping you turn in really. The steering is really sharp. It's 2.16 turns lock to lock. The turning circle is 10.5 meters, which is kind of large-ish for a small car, but it's not large overall. So nothing to really complain about there. The ride can be a little bit punishing on the road. This is a very tightly suspended car. And I would say that the i20N doesn't quite achieve that sort of almost balletic kind of firmly suspended 
ride danceability the way a really great Renault Sport product would do. Certainly, probably not one that's currently on sale, but certainly some from the past that have just sort of tap over bumps. I think the i20 has a little bit of vertical pitch to it. Occasionally, very occasionally, it'll kiss the bun stops in the front end, but it's nothing really to be concerned about. You're buying this car to have a great time and to be able to do great track laps, not to kind of pot it at the shops and complain about its ride, which you don't really need to do because it's really pretty good. In terms of the safety in the i20N, besides the fact that it has an absolutely fantastic chassis and not a scary oversteery one either, just a adjustable, involving, great, grippy, drivable car, it has the basics in safety, blind spot monitoring, uh, rear cross traffic collision avoidance, it has cruise control that's not adaptive, which I personally love, but some people may not, but it means you can do all the stuff yourself instead of having it interfere. Um, lane keep assist, steering assist, it's on its game for a light hatch. It's perhaps not as sophisticated as some of the cars higher up uh, in the hot hatch hierarchy, but that's why we're here. This car is all about being light and affordable and fun. About the only thing I can pick on is that the engine, while it's chubby and strong and has a really barky little exhaust note, it just isn't as barky as an i30N's. And I suppose it's almost like an engineered hierarchy in Hyundai's own end model lineup that the little hatch doesn't cut the grass of the bigger hatch. So I think an i30N does sound better and probably has a little bit more induction muscle, but you know, I suppose at the end of the day, the car's so drivable and it's all about the handling that the engine does still a terrific job in supporting that. The reason why we don't get the normal i20 versions is because they're actually too expensive. So it's kind of good that the one version we do get, which is this i20N here, made in Turkey, is so damn good. It's such a great little light hot hatch, but what defines this car is not only the fact that it's $32,500 with only two options to add, but that it's such a great little driver's hatch. That mechanical limited slip diff at the front is absolutely superb, sucking that nose into a corner and making this one of the most agile little hot hatches you'll drive. In fact, if you bought this car and didn't drive it on track, I feel like you'd be missing part of the fun of this vehicle because there's just so much fun to be had in the i20N that you can only go so far on a public road. The thing is though, that the i20N is such a great little light hatch for doing all of those things that we want a car to do every day, like going to the shops, driving around town, being talky, carrying three kids across the back seat, stuff like that, it absolutely aces. It's the fact that it has all of that performance bandwidth up its sleeve is what makes this car truly great, especially for 32 grand. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video and let us know what you think about the 2022 Hyundai i20N or chasing cars. Thanks for watching.